I've actually had one experience with this kind of cult myself. One time we had a quartet gig and we were booked for a big event for the Scientology church. That's the church that Tom Cruise belongs to. It's like very controversial. Today we're talking about Netflix's new crime docuseries In the Name of God, A Holy Betrayal and I have to give trigger warnings from the start because this is really not for the faint-hearted or sensitive people. There are going to be mentions of child abuse, of rape, of nudity, sexual violence, swearing. I really hope YouTube doesn't demonetize this video. I have to be really careful today. It's an eight episode docuseries and each one is about one hour each and it discusses four radical cults in recent Korean history and the effect that these cult leaders had on their followers and people. The first three episodes follows this particular Christian Gospel Mission group also known as JMS. From the first 15 seconds of starting this series you are in instantly traumatized because it's an audio recording of a woman being forced onto by this leader and honestly the whole series in general is very graphic, more graphic than I thought it was going to be. There are literal pictures of like dead bodies and it's blurred and censored but you can still kind of see everything. It's honestly it's shocking so you have to be kind of mentally prepared to watch this. You get to see how these cult leaders manipulated, lied their way into power. The common theme running throughout all these leaders is that they claim that they are the messiah, they are the chosen one. They have these like magical healing, terminal disease curing powers. They like touch people on the head. They're like, you are cured from cancer. They seemingly make people who are disabled, unable to walk, seemingly be able to walk again. It's all a lot of like, bullshit to be honest but people buy into it because once you're in that environment and everyone is like feeding off that energy you believe into the hype that this leader he is the messiah a lot of them were being guilt tripped into receiving this abuse if you don't obey the leader if you just don't do as he wants then you're going to go to the worst parts of hell or they were just being violently beaten and even killed sometimes. In the first series, for example, about JMS, there's this one particular victim. Her name is Maple and she's from Hong Kong. She was hating herself for not loving this old wrinkly man who was assaulting her. She was questioning her faith saying, why can't I love this man? Why am I being so ungrateful? Why can I not accept the love that God has given me? That was her thinking. You're being completely taken advantage of and you're being abused, yet you're still so brainwashed into being like, I am the problem. I am the one that must not be completely faithful to God or something. It's It boggled my mind. In the Baby Gardens, which is like the third cult in the series, that one talks about this crazy female leader, again, claiming that she is the Messiah and all this. She manages to get her followers to lose all of their compassion, all of their humanity, she um, makes parents not feel love for their children. She doesn't let children call their parents as like mom and dad, but like completely as strangers. They're not allowed to live together. And so you see parents who are so deep into the brainwashing, their child, this young boy is like basically put into a pigsty. He has his arms wrapped behind him. He's being beaten with whips and sticks, being fed pig waste and just being starved and beaten to death basically. And the mother is so brainwashed to the point where as all of these injustices are later found out in court, she's still defending the cult leader. She's that brainwashed and she's saying, oh, my boy died of like a heart attack and not because he was severely beaten to death. Maternal love is one of those basic human instincts that is like probably one of the strongest emotions that you'll ever feel. And the fact that these cult leaders managed to convince people to bypass that maternal instincts and just utterly be faithful and devoted to them is scary and it's shocking. And these cult leaders, with the amount of power that they had, they obviously used it for not great things. For the first cult, the JMS leader, he is honestly the most sex crazed person that you'll ever see. One victim says he probably slept with more than 50 women per day and he would invite these girls into his room and just start putting his hands on their bodies and just say, because I need to heal your body, I need to make sure there's nothing wrong with your body, that's why I'm touching your private parts. And then these girls all became part of like a pyramid scheme, I guess, where the abuse just continued to continue because they would keep bringing in new girls for him to abuse. Abuse. That's what they were told that they had to do and they had to please him. It reminded me very much of like Jeffrey Epstein, the Jislin Maxwell. It's very much like that the abuse cycle just continues. And this guy, he used the story of Adam and Eve to say like people should not be giving into their desires. Whereas he himself, he is the perfect Adam. So he is allowed to do whatever he wants. They turned his birthplace, which was Wormyongdo, and, and then they called it the Jerusalem of the East. And they had shipping containers 
full of women living in cramped conditions and he would just come and like have intercourse with all of them. Him and his followers, they played these soccer games that lasted five to six hours and he would score about 60 goals in one session because the other players, they would just like let him score, let him win. They were not defending. So he was like seen as like this amazing person, an amazing player who could score 60 goals. <laughs> and then afterwards, he would come into these bathrooms when there were like 10, 15 women and he would like take showers with them all and then just start having intercourse with all of them. It's honestly just disgusting. And another common thing that ran throughout all of these calls is like anyone who tried to leave, anyone who tried to defect, speak about the truth, they would get beaten, their families would get extremely beaten, they would get killed. All of the nasty stuff that happens with real life cults even happening today. One story that stood out to me in the first cult, apparently there was a fire and they were all watching it on TV and like many people died and he was saying, oh what a waste of pussies. We should have converted them. Now they're all like, it's gone to waste, basically. And everyone else was watching in horror, like, did he just literally just say that? That's what he's thinking. It's disgusting. It's absolutely disgusting. But he does get arrested and he does get in prison for 10 years. And it's absolutely hilarious to watch this guy when he's captured and he was pretending to act insane so he could get off or how he started like, fake convulsing in court. He started begging the prosecutor to let him go. He was on his knees and like begging on his knees. And he says, I never claimed that I was the Messiah. I don't know what they're talking about. I'm just like a normal pastor. Some of his devout followers committed suicide after hearing him say that because for their whole life, they believed he was the answer to the world. And then him suddenly saying, I'm not the Messiah actually. Some of them committed suicide because they were so shocked and betrayed by it all. And then episode four is based on a different cult with a female leader. And it's, this is shocking because 32 people were found dead in an attic together. The female leader, she had so many investors and people who gave her private loans for things with like 40% interest. She was never going to be able to repay them all. It's still unclear what happened there, but this mass suicide is driven by religious fanaticism and some like shady business, including all of this debt. And episode five and six it follows the baby gardens cult and this is for me it was the hardest to i'm mean, not that all of them are easy to watch but this one was the hardest to watch for me because a five-year-old boy dies in a pigsty like i mentioned earlier you hear from past members of the cult who actually participated in beating the boy and you see the mother of nakwit that was the name of the boy that died you see herself like talking about how she used to be brainwashed but now she's like she hates herself she's like slapping herself across the face it's hard to feel sympathy for her though yes she was brainwashed Wash, but you let that happen to your own son. Yeah, I don't know. I found it hard to have sympathy for her. And then the final two episodes follows a man who leads the cult Manmin Central Church. A normal, typical cult leader behavior. He takes many donations and he loads it all in gambling in Las Vegas. <laughs> Basically, this was a money-making scam. The more money you donated, the higher up the church you got. It encouraged people to just give and give and give more money. Fun fact, I've actually had one experience with this kind of like cult myself. I'm not religious, I'm not part of any religious group, but when I was living in the UK and I was working as a musician, one time we had a quartet gig and we were booked for a big event for the Scientology church. That's the church that Tom Cruise belongs to, it's like very controversial. We were taken to the event and they had so much money you guys, it was a massive massive event. It looked like basically an award ceremony like the Oscars or something and I just got very very weird vibes walking around. I would go into the rooms and like you see the paintings of their, their leader and Scientology is based kind of like on science fiction mixed in with like you know Christianity and all of this it was a lot of just like weird vibes in between breaks between rehearsals and the actual concert me and my musician friends we were just walking around and then someone could come up to us and they'll be like what level are you and I was like what sorry and they're like what level are you I was like oh no 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 I'm just a musician here for tonight and they're like oh okay <laughs> It was just honestly bizarre. But I think Scientology is similar, like if you donate more money, then you go higher up and stuff, so yeah. <laughs> there are so many other more cults that exist in Korea today, aside from these ones mentioned. The prominent one these days is Shincheonji, and actually they have the biggest Shincheonji church where my dad's house is in Kwacheon. So I see a lot of weird people walking around. I can't personally imagine myself ever falling for like a cult like this because I very much live in reality. <laughs> I can't see myself getting into one but many vulnerable people do. Have you guys had experience with cults? Let 
let me know down in the comments down below. As for my review, I usually like true crime, but um, I can't say this was like an enjoyable watch. You feel very angry and frustrated that there is not proper justice brought to these cult leaders. Like for the first one, he went to jail, but after he came out of jail, like he just kind of continued as if nothing had happened. The baby gardens lady, she still has apparently a record label that's still like making her decent money and stuff. So she's living a good life. And so actually I was reading articles for K-pop fans to take action to a boycott album sold by Sinara Records that was founded by the cult leader in 1982. It really is on the graphic side. They don't sugarcoat anything. They just give you all the facts and all of the stories are real stories. And that just makes it more horrifying. I just felt myself losing faith in humanity after watching all of this evil play out. Hopefully it will prevent newer people from joining these types of cults. Please don't fall into a cult. Don't join them. It's not worth it. What else are you watching on Netflix? Any recommendations? Please leave them for me down below. And yeah, see you in the next one. Bye.